Welcome to Talk of the Bay. I'm Rachel Ann Goodman. And here with me on the radio is Michael Soller. He is Deputy Director for the Insurance Department of California and Press Secretary for Ricardo Lara. And he's going to talk to us about a recent conversation we had on the radio about what Ricardo Lara, our insurance commissioner for the state of California, is proposing to fix the crisis of homeowners insurance. And just to set some context uh, for our last conversation, recently State Farm announced it's exiting the state, and this is going on the heels of several other major homeowners insurance companies that just said it was too expensive to make policies here for homeowners given um, climate change. I know that it's more complicated than that, but um, would you agree, Michael Soller, that this is the state of affairs currently? Good morning, Rachel. Thanks for having me on. And um, yes, absolutely. Uh, insurance um, consumers are under pressure in California like like never before, really, in our state. You have to go back to um, some of the, the worst times in California history, like the Northridge earthquake, to find a time when insurance was as difficult to find in our state. And and so it's I appreciate you having me on um, to to put some context to this, because uh, there's a, there's I know there's a lot of questions out there, particularly in the in the you know Monterey Santa Cruz area. Exactly. So we were the victims of the CZU fire, and many of us, including myself, got notices of cancellation. In some cases, right before the fire happened. In my case, and then pretty much every year since, we've had to find a new policy. Uh, and if my case is just one of many many examples where we went from like twenty four hundred to a quote in the fair plan of. 12,000 a year. So um, that's a pretty big jump and other people have had the same experience. So I guess I'll start by saying the fair plan itself was meant to be a insurer of last resort. But last I checked, I think they said there were 350,000 people on that plan. That sounds like a large amount and probably too big for the state to actually make good if there's a major catastrophe like CZU. Is that correct? So uh, let me take a step back and I want to talk about the fair plan because I, I think more people are aware of the fair plan now than probably ever before, but, but many listeners may not have heard of it still. Um, just to, just to step back, um, you know, the department of insurance, our goal is to make sure that insurance is as available as possible and that you get the best value for your insurance. And we're working under a set of rules that date back uh, more than 30 years to the passage of Proposition 103 by voters in 1988. And what that established is that the Department of Insurance is the main check, it's the consumer's check on insurance rates. We closely review every single rate application coming from an insurance company. But it's also important to understand that there are some limits to Proposition 103, and we're running into those limits right now. Unlike public utilities, which are required to cover everyone in the area. Insurance companies have no such requirements. Under Proposition 103, they're free to write and choose where they're gonna write. Many, in many cases, that's worked out for the state, but we have seen state companies pull back in various ways, even over the past 30 years. The problem now is with the, the combination of, of climate change and some of the global increase of, of disasters that we've seen. Um, insurance companies are pulling back on a scale that is really unprecedented in our state. And so we need some new tools to deal with that. So that's the context for what Commissioner Lara is working on. Um, we have decades long neglected decisions and outdated regulations that we are working over this year to update so that we have more options, especially in places that are prone to wildfires. And so just, just th that's, I think some important understanding of you know, what we're trying to do in the state because we want, every Californian to have options for insurance. We want them to have multiple competitive options. And in many places, including, you know, what the, the you know, in the areas that, that where your listeners are, the fair plan has become the only option instead of what it was meant to be, which is the last resort insurance. Um, so that's, you know, I, I think that's what, what you're seeing and experiencing. Um, and, and many people are experiencing this and the fair plan has grown um, particularly after the 2017 and 2018 fires. So the, the increase to 350,000, um, according to the fair plan, that's the fair plan's numbers, um, you know, that reflects 
a little more than 3% of the overall homeowners market in California, 8.56 8. or 8, you know, 8.5 to 8.7 million homes. Massive. We're the biggest market in the country. Um, you know, we're the fourth largest insurance property insurance market in the world. So um, that growth is a problem. It's a problem for consumers who are on the fair plan um, because it's limited coverage. And a growing fair plan is a problem for all of us because it, it concentrates those, those riskier, those higher risk properties into one big insurance pool. And, and you know, as we as we hear, you know, we think about high risk health insurance pools, in, in some ways it, it's a similar. A high risk property insurance pool means that the, in the case of a, of a devastating fire, those are at, at, at greater risk. And also it seems that uh, in addition to fleeing the state, we've seen a monopoly of a few companies surviving at all, and that smaller companies driven out of business, you know, because of the catastrophes, but also just because of the way the market has been allowed to uh, free market itself. You know, essentially, um, these bigger companies gobbling up or putting out of business the smaller ones. So, I'd like us to go over Ricardo Lara, the commissioner's plan to try to fix this problem. And I know he's come under quite a bit of uh, criticism from Consumer Watchdog, which was on the show a couple weeks ago and had some pointed criticisms of the commissioner's plan. And I want to um, have you address some of those. So let's start out by talking about what the commissioner is proposing and how that is expected to remedy the problems we just discussed of availability and affordability. Absolutely. And I wanted to make one point. Uh, as well. Um, you know, I didn't hear consumer watchdogs criticisms, but I've certainly heard them before. They're very familiar. There are entrenched groups that have been defending that are defending the current rules. Um, these groups have benefited from these rules. Um, the problem is that there is no benefit for consumers when insurance companies pause writing uh, or increase their rates. In many cases, consumer watchdog has signed off on rate increases for companies where the companies continue to not write policies, continue to not re, you know, renew policies. And so I think it's important to understand you know, that the, you know, where the critics are coming from on this, um, uh, some of them. You know, and I think that the, uh, again, the Commissioner Lada's goal is, is really to update regulations so that we have a, a robust market for every consumer. And so I can walk you through a little bit of that, but I think it's important to, to understand um, that that you know where the critics are coming from. Um, this the second, you know, I think the the second point you made. I'll take the first point uh, first, which is, you know, California has a large number of companies writing in the state. So we have uh, more than a hundred homeowners. It, just in homeowners insurance alone, more than a hundred companies writing. Um, we've had a number of companies either pause writing or limit their writing. So, so companies haven't left the state. But instead of what they've what they've done, uh, for the most part, is limit. So they're writing fewer policies in higher risk areas, uh, and in some cases, like State Farm and Allstate, they've paused all new policies entirely. And that has that is really the the dynamic that's driving um, Commissioner Lara and the changes that he's proposed. Because we have we do have a highly concentrated market, uh, twelve companies, twelve insurance groups, I should say. They're, they're an insurance group and have many companies, but 12 insurance groups write 85% of the homeowner's policies in the state. Now, a lot of smaller companies make up the rest of that. So it's important that we have both larger companies and smaller companies. And in fact, cre creating opportunities for smaller companies to come into the market and write is very, very important. And it's a big part of, of what we're trying to do. So uh, that, that was a lot, but I can walk through a couple of the the, the components of what we're doing this year. That'd be I would appreciate that. One of them is this idea of a catastrophe modeling, uh, allowing the companies essentially to use a catastrophe modeling, which I understand is you know statistical models that try to predict where and how severe the losses are going to be in a high risk fire area. Uh, the criticism that many have lodged, including Consumer Watchdog, but not exclusively, other reporters have brought this up, is we don't know what those models actually are built on. And there doesn't seem to be um, a guarantee that we will know, you know, how 
they're constructed and therefore the trust in them for actually coming out with a reasonable number at the other end of cost and risk. You know, I know that they have their actuarial tables and all these complex tools, but unless the public or at least experts could look at them and decide whether they're biased or not toward the company, people aren't going to trust them, I'm afraid. So that's the criticism. I understand that creating these models might be the solution, but I'm worried. And I think other people are that we will be, they will be used to boost our rates, essentially. So transparency and public review are core principles under California law of insurance rate review. Everything we do, you know, is, uh, po you know, all of the rate filings are posted to our website. You can go through those. You can see the elements that go into making up a rate. Um, it, it's very complex. Um, but it's all laid out for public review. So that's a core, it's a core principle and it's a priority um, for our department and for Commissioner Lada. Um, he, what he's proposed, Commissioner Lada has really proposed a, a comprehensive strategy for addressing the problems that we are see, experiencing in California, the, the lack of availability of insurance, particularly in higher risk areas like, like you know, the Santa Cruz Mountains and Aptos and and parts of parts of Monterey County um, that are that have have either experienced fires or have you know are at risk of fires, and it, it it's a it responds to um, you know how insurance companies are looking at risk more and more they're looking at uh, they're using computer models and computer modeling to even get down to the property level. Um, uh, your home has a wildfire risk score. And until a few years ago, I think most Californians weren't even aware of this, uh, you know, and, and had no idea what went into that score. So one of the actions that we've taken already is to implement a new regulation requiring insurance companies to tell you what your wildfire risk score is and to give you discounts if you have taken actions uh, on a on a list of actions that that created by Cal Fire and the Department of Insurance um, to make your home safer from wildfires, so that's we are opening up the 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 black box on wildfire risk scoring, so that you understand you know what risk you actually have at your house, and that is that is a huge change from where we were even a few years ago when someone would get a non renewal notice and the reason would be wildfire risk. Right. And I'd like to add to that, that uh, a lot yeah. of these scores were neighborhood wide or even like whole district wide. They were not granular to the property owner. You know, you could have the most clean off property with no brush at all um, and everything hardened, you know, with stucco. But if your neighbor had a brushy house, you were screwed, you know, and I think that still has not been remedied because we've been talking to insurance companies and they seem to look at it as a blanket. Well, your area and including some areas of the west side of Santa Cruz that are literally in town getting these notices or Ben Loman, you know, which is a little community, some of which is in a town, some of which is in the hills surrounded by brush. But they were looking with the broad brush, so to speak, at these whole yeah. communities. And you know, the Paradise Fire and the Santa Rosa Fire, the Tubbs Fire, they happen in cities. So I don't really, I don't know how this is going to play out, but um, it seems no, like I think they're, they're using bigger areas than they should in, in determining these risk numbers. You are exactly right. And and we heard this, you know, we, we met, we've met with folks all across the state and we heard the same things um, that following the 2018, 20, you know, fires, um, you know, that, that I'm being... I'm being, my insurance company is non-renewing me, but they haven't even looked at my property, for instance, um, you know, or I'm being non-renewed because of something, something that is, you know, uh, you know, uh, I don't have any control over uh, state land or national or federal lands or, or, or my neighbor's house. And I think so safer from wildfires is, is the first ever, you know, statewide effort to develop a list of, of, of actions that you can take that will actually that will reduce the risk of wildfire. And it includes both things you do for your home, um, things you do for the immediate surroundings like defensible space and thing and a community. And, Cause it's, it, you put your finger on it. You know, if you do everything, but your neighbor hasn't, you know, that does still put you at risk. 
um, in an ember driven fire, like the fires we saw in CZ, you know, CZU fire. And I mean, that's the, that's the kind of fire that, that we're seeing now with climate change, you know, increasing the, 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 um, you know, voraciousness of these ember driven fires. And so safer from wildfires is really meant to help prevent your home from catching fire, you know, from embers landing, igniting your structure and spreading to other homes. So I think, the, I think that is, you know, a, a really critical under, you know, it, that's underneath everything that we're doing this year um, is that working to bring down the risk to homes, working to bring down the risk in a community is absolutely essential. And insurance has to be a part of that. And for the first time ever, it is. And, and insurance companies are, we are in the, in the um, process of approving discount programs. We've approved a number. They aren't on the market yet because insurance companies are implementing them still. But even for the FAIR plan, if you're on the FAIR plan, you can get a discount of up to 25% off your, uh, your wildfire component of your premium, which can be a very large part of your premium if you're in, if you're in a, you know, a, a, a wooded area. Um, so that's, that's something that folks should be talking to. You should be talking to your insurance agent, um, asking them when is this gonna be available and talking to the Department of Insurance um, you can always contact us at 800-927-4357 or insurance.ca.gov and talk to us about any issue you're facing, including a non-renewal. Will there be an opportunity for the public to weigh in on these changes in policy? Is there any public forum besides the phone number for the public who wants to influence or comment on the way this is being handled? Yes, let me look. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get you an actual date here. Give me a second. Um, and if you just join me, I'm speaking with Michael Soller. He is the Deputy Direct, uh, Insurance Commissioner, um, Press Secretary for Ricardo Lara, our Insurance Commissioner for the state of California. We're talking about the flight or pausing or however you want to discuss it of major insurance companies in uh, wildland and not so wildland areas of California. I think 25% of the homeowners in the state are affected by this crisis, as it's being called. I don't think anyone's calling it anything other than a crisis, since if you can't get insurance, you can't sell your home either, which is a huge problem. You know, if you look at places like, like the Big Island, where they had lava flows, no insurance, people went bare, so to speak. Uh, and they just said, well, I'll just rebuild my house with cash, you know, if it burns down which is not where we want to be as a state. But um, John Laird, in the interview I did with him, our representative in the Senate, said that he had constituents who were literally going without any insurance at all because they could not afford the fair plan and they could not get insurance. So this is going to affect not just the homeowners in the mountains, which you could say was a small fraction. It's going to affect all consumers because if these companies won't write in your state, they won't write in all of your state, right? Not just in the wildland areas, they're gone. And that just leaves you with fewer choices. So it really is a problem. And it sounds like there is a way for people to weigh in with you, with the insurance commissioner in public. When would those happen? Absolutely. So Commissioner Lara's sustainable insurance strategy has four major components. Um, the first addresses improving really the rate, the rate review process that I talked about at the start of this to make sure that the information that we are getting from insurance companies is complete um, and, and that we're, we're you know, able to, to thoroughly vet these, these, these insurance rates as they're coming in. And, um, and I, can I stop you at each one and sure. ask a question? Sure, How much are they asking for an increase? What is the average so far coming in from insurance companies that, you know, the, in a way you could say they're blackmailing us because they left the state and now they have all the power and they're saying, we'll come back under the following circumstances, which is hardball. I mean, let's face it. It is hardball saying, I will not insure unless you give me what I want. So they have a lot of cards in this game. And I'm wondering, you know, what are you seeing in the way of requests for the percentage of increases from these companies? That's a great question. People can go to our website, insurance.ca.gov. And we've actually posted, we have a page about the sustainable insurance strategy. And you can actually go, there's a presentation. You can look at what some of these, in, these insurance companies have requested um, and received. And under Proposition 103, insurance companies are free to set their rates at any level that they want. That's an important fact to understand. 
Um, because it, it, any level, as long as uh, it is appropriate to the risk, it is not unfairly discriminatory, and it and it and it covers their their future claims. And what we want most of all is uh, insurance that is available, um, and insurance companies that don't pause uh, and and pull back, or in the worst case, uh, which hasn't happened in 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 years, go insolvent. Right, that is kind of the worst case. Um, and California has a really good track record in keeping companies help you know in companies staying solvent. Um, and able to pay claims. So that's just yeah, a, just a, in that a, in that area sure. to to take that apart a little bit. They have all these other states that don't have quite the wildfire risk. You know, they have Michigan. They have places where it rains a lot more. Virginia. They have policies all over the country that ought to be sustaining them financially. It's not like we're the entire country. We are a big state. So is Florida, which has had even worse and problems insurance wise than we have. And there's yeah. been like worries that we could go down that path because they were trying to regulate the companies and the companies just left. So uh, I want to ask you about that. Yeah, Rachel, we don't that's a be- really important point. Um, we are the biggest market in the in the country and fourth largest in the world. And we're also connected to these other states. And the things that are happening in California, the climate impacts that we're seeing, seeing are happening state, statewide, na- nationwide, globally. And so that the, you know, when we look at Florida, or we look at um, you know Michigan or Minnesota that have had massive losses from flooding and windstorms. You know, at, talking with insurance commissioners in other states uh, and insurance departments, everyone is experiencing climate change right now. And so the the things that we're that we're doing are focused on California, but we also need these other states to to do well in their markets to do well um, and to thrive. And there are wor- there's work going on at the national level um, really to improve uh, resilience. There's a new national resilience strategy that was just approved um, by insurance commissioners, um, bipartisan, nonpartisan. Um, you know, where can we work together? And that's not something we hear in Washington very often um, is agreement that, that we, you know, that we need to do, we need to address climate change. Um, and so there's some progress happening there um, at the national level. Um, and but here in California, and I think we just to come back to come back to the sort of the, the components, what we're working on. I mean, you mentioned uh, the um, uh, sorry, you mentioned the catastrophe modeling. So that's the second component of what Commissioner Lada has proposed. Um, and just to put, t- pull that apart a little bit, what that what that means is this is about how do insurance companies predict um, or estimate um, future losses. Um, in order to make a rate filing, in order to have that ability to to pay those future claims. And currently, what California requires, uh, which is unlike any other state, um, is historical data. So insurance companies look at their historical data, uh, their losses from major wildfires like the CZU, Camp Fire, um, Tubbs Fire, and they take a portion of that and estimate future rates. There's a major problem with that. Um, Number one, it can lead to rate spikes for consumers based on these massive fires. When a massive fire happens, an insurance company is allowed legally under Proposition 103 to take that, to put a component of that into people's rates. So it can lead to a rate spike like the kinds of things that I think people are experiencing um, and what you'll see on our website. Um, The second problem is that just looking at the past, doesn't let you take advantage of uh, any wildfire safety actions, um, the millions, billions that are being spent at the state level and the federal level on protecting people. And and these are projects that are happening on federal lands, on state lands. Um, So there's no recognition of wildfire safety. And so the catastrophe modeling that Commissioner Lada has proposed would allow companies to use forward-looking computer models that are based in part on historical data, but also use a lot of other data. And he's requiring that they incorporate wildfire safety. So if you've done things to your home, if your fire department has done work, that model actually has to take that into account. So that's a that's a ground shift for the state. Um, and all of these models under the proposed regulation, all of these models will be fully reviewed. Um, any member of the public can participate in that review. Um, and, and 
you know, before they can even be used in a rate filing. And so, so the, the public review part is critical and the transparency part is critical. And we have a hearing coming up here uh, on April 23rd, 2 p.m. on April 23rd. And if you go to our website, insurance.ca.gov, you can see the, the invitation, um, you can join, you can watch, you can make comments. So we invite, we invite any member of the public to that. That's fantastic. I'm sure people will want to participate, especially if they don't have to drive to Sacramento. No, it's a vir yeah. virtual hearing. Um, we, we realize people, uh, people are busy. So another issue that was brought up in the conversation we had uh, initially with Senator Laird and a consumer watchdog was this idea of reinsurance. And I understand at the federal level, there is a bill that hasn't passed yet that would bolster the reinsurance uh, companies. This is the insurers of the insurance companies. And that's mm -hmm. been um, a complaint that they can't get in, the companies themselves can't get insurance. So, how do you feel about that? Um, <laughs> they're in the same boat we are in some weird way and Absolutely. it gets passed on to us. So how would you respond to the federal response? Is it going to be adequate to shore up these industries so that you know we can still have insurance in the state? No, that's a really good question. I mean, the the, the uh, reinsurance, it, it is insurance for insurance companies. Um, the other, but it is also a way that insurance companies manage their climate risk. I mean, what we have a, a survey that we do that the Department of Insurance leads, but is now nationwide, where we survey insurance companies and we look at their, their what are their strategies for dealing with climate risk. Um, and what we're finding is that reinsurance is a major way that companies are are managing risk to be able to keep writing policies. And again, that's it ties back to um, the ability. To, uh, to you know, to make insurance available to everybody in all areas, and so reinsurance is another component that we are working on right now. Whether that would, how to allow that, how to recognize that, it wouldn't be all re your reinsurance costs as an insurance company. It would be California only, because we don't want to pay for the costs in other states. That's a really important, um, uh, important part of this. Um, we don't want to pay for Gulf Coast hurricanes, but we do need to recognize that there are costs to doing business in California. And so that's a third component um, of the insurers, of the Commissioner Lauda's strategy. And the final component, just to mention it, is, is modernizing the FAIR plan and improving the FAIR plan. It kind of brings it full circle, making sure that the FAIR plan has is you know, adequate coverage for people. Because in many cases, um, you know, we've increased the coverage limits. Um, Commissioner Lauda, when he came into office, the coverage limits hadn't changed in 25 years. And home prices had certainly grown in Santa Cruz. I mean, you couldn't get, you know, $1.5 million of coverage back then didn't get you very far. So we have increased that for properties, increased it for commercial. Um, so if you're a business, you can now get, get uh, much more adequate. But there's more that we need to do, particularly for HOAs um, and, and, and apartment complexes. So those are the, those are the major elements. Well, I know we've uh, just about run out of time. So is there anything final you'd like to say about the future of this problem uh, timeline wise? When can consumers feel like they're actually getting somewhere? When when can we start to see any change in the situation, do you think? I know you can't predict the future, but given what you know from the inside of the regulation part of the equation. Yes, I, I don't have a magic ball, but we are working at the Department of Insurance on a, on a very fast timeline to implement all of these regulatory changes this year. We've already introduced two of the, of the components um, to get that public input, which is, which is critical to making good policy. Um, so we're working very quickly to, to do this. At the same time, I would urge people to uh, visit our website, um, insurance.ca.gov, and check out the Safer from Wildfires list of actions and compare that to what you're doing. I know we're getting here into May is Wildfire Awareness Month. Um, it's it's the time, you know, we, late season fires, you know, late summer, uh, uh, you know, is when we often see fires. So there's time now, we've, we're coming out of a wet winter to be able to do this work. Um, so making a five foot no ignition zone around your house is something that, that you can start on now. And that's gonna have a benefit for your insurance, for your rates and for the ability to, to have to even have insurance. And so that's what we urge people to do right now is, is, is get started on that work because it could save your home, um, it could save your neighbor's home, it could save your life uh, in, a, in an ember-driven fire. 
um, to to have a home that that's that's really safer from wildfires. And finally, um, one last question. The legislature started to take this up at the very end of session in a way that was very rushed and it didn't really yield much. And I think what John Laird said was that they really need to take it up as a legislature as well. Are you, is there some sort of synchronization of between the commissioner's plan and legislators who are thinking about addressing this from their side of the aisle? That's a great question. Commissioner Lada has testified at, at several uh, oversight hearings of the Assembly and the Senate. Um, there's another one in May uh, that he'll be testifying at. Um, so absolutely engaging, working with the legislature. Um, there are a couple of bills that have been proposed, um, one for to require better reporting of, of the FAIR plan itself, um, which is we're in, we're in strong support of that. Um, and, and, you know, the important thing to know is that Everything that I've talked about that we're working on this year, um, the Department of Insurance is doing that under our existing authority. So we're not going to have to go back to the legislature to get authority to do these, to take these steps. Um, we're taking them now. Um, and so because I, I know people, you know, the legislative process is, is important to me, but it can take time to play out. So we're moving forward now. Um, but that absolutely, those conversations with the legislature, with the governor's office continue so that we're all, all government is moving in the right direction on this. All right. Thank you. I've been speaking with Michael Soler. He is the deputy uh, insurance commissioner for the state of California and uh, represents Ricardo Lara's office in the press. Thank you for being with us here on Talk of the Bay. I really appreciate your time. Rachel, I appreciate you having me on. Great. Thank you so much. I'm Rachel Ann Goodman, and this is Talk of the Bay. Thank you for tuning in.